React Router version 6 will let you create protected routes with role-based user permissions. Kevin is a user, but he does not have editor or admin permissions. He can log in and see the home page, but he can't access anything else. Dave is an editor. When he logs in, he'll be able to view the editor's page. But after that, he'll attempt to access the admin page, and he'll be unauthorized to do so. He can go to the lounge where admins and editors hang out. And now we'll look at Jane. When Jane logs in, she's an admin, but she'll try to access the editor's page, which is only for editors, so she'll be unauthorized for that. However, she can access the admin page, and she can also access the lounge where admins and editors hang out. Let's look at the React code that makes all of this work. Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today we're going to create protected routes with React Router version 6. These protected routes will also have role-based user permissions. This is more of an intermediate level React tutorial than it is beginner. Ideally, you will have already completed my React.js for beginners course or a similar course for getting started with React. And I have separate tutorials for the login and register forms you'll see today, as well as the node backend we'll use for authentication. I put links to all of those in in the description, and I'll share a link to the source code for this lesson too. Now you can see I've got Visual Studio Code open to full screen here, and we're looking at the dependencies in the package JSON. Now while most of these dependencies already existed for the register or the login page, one we'll be adding today is React Router DOM version 6. You can see I've got version 6.2.1 as of this tutorial. Now we need to open a new terminal window. You can do that from the terminal menu or press control back tick like I did. And then I'm going to type in npm i and then react-router-dom, the at symbol and the number six. And now you would press enter to install that. I already have it installed, but that will let you get started. And then after it's installed, come back to the tutorial. I'm going to close the terminal window and we're going to look at the index.js now. In the index.js, we're going to import several things from React Router. So we'll start with browser router. And then we also need routes and then the singular route all from react-router-dom. And once we've imported those, we're going to start with the browser router. And so we put that right after react.strict mode and before the auth provider that we have in there that was used in our login tutorial. That is from the context API and we are using context to provide a global auth state with the auth provider. After that, we need to apply the routes. So after the auth provider, and we'll go ahead and surround the app component with routes. But then we're not just going to have the app component here. We need to have a route and set the path equal to the root plus an asterisk because we'll have routes nested inside of it. So the only way those will match up with the root is to go ahead and have the slash and the asterisk instead of just the slash. And then let's go ahead and put the element attribute. And inside this element attribute is where we put our app component. And once we've done that, we just need to close the route component and we're finished with the index.js file. Now let's look at the app component in the app.js file. And you can see I have imported a lot of components already. Most of these will just be to navigate between to show the different user-based permissions. But overall, we'll look at a few of those in more detail. Now inside the functional app component itself with the return, you can see we left this where we had the login tutorial with the main element, class name of app applied, and the login component inside. We're going to replace all of that with a layout component. So let's look at this layout component. We're importing outlet from React Router DOM. And then inside the functional component itself, we're returning what mostly looks like what we had inside of the app.js. We have that main element, class name set equal to app, but now we have the outlet component inside. The outlet component represents all the children of the layout component. So anything nested inside the layout component is represented by the outlet. And that allows you to apply more things to your overall app if you want to. You could have a header component in here, you could have a footer, 
And of course, we can use more than one outlet as we create routing inside of our application too. This is a fairly basic example for this tutorial. So we just have the one outlet and everything will be nested inside of this layout component. So now that we know how the layout works with the outlet, let's close it out and apply that here to our app.js component. So we need to import a couple of things from React Router. We're going to import routes, if I could type, there we go, and route, a singular again, and then that is going to come from react-router-dom. And now that we have that, let's go ahead and remove everything inside the return. And we'll start with routes. And then nested inside the routes, we'll put our first route. And that's going to be a path equal to the root, which is a slash. Then we'll set the element equal to that layout component that we just looked at. Once we have that, we just want to put the greater than symbol to close the route and get a closing route tag, because now we'll be able to nest other components inside of this layout route that is attached to our root path. I'm going to scroll for some more room here, and then I'm just going to paste in the other components and we'll discuss. So now that we have all of these other components inside of the layout component, We've got a group here that I labeled as public. We'll want to keep these public. We have the login page, the register page, a link page so we can just navigate and try out the other routes, and then an unauthorized page that will show when someone is not authorized. And then we have some routes that we want to turn into protected routes. Right now they're not, but we have the home route, which is once again just the root path. Then we have the editor, the admin, and then the lounge that should be accessible to both editors and admins. And then we have a catch-all path. Essentially, any request that doesn't match a path will go to this, essentially a 404 page, and we'll show our missing component for that. So all of these routes should now be available publicly. They're just not protected yet. So let's save this open a terminal window again, and go ahead and start our application with npm start. Okay, and with our application started, we are at the home component right now because it's not protected, and we can go to the editor page, we can go to the admin page, we can even go to the lounge, nothing is protected right now, so all links are working. We go to the link page, here's the login, we can go back and go to the register as well. Everything's available, and this lets us know our route paths are working. They're just not protected yet. So now let's go back to Visual Studio Code. I'll close the terminal, and we're ready to update how we're handling the global auth state. We won't be putting the auth inside of our routes at all, essentially, because we want to keep this clean. We don't want to have any of the conditional logic here. We don't want to see if user and so on before our routes. We want to handle this in a cleaner way and the way that's really recommended by the React Router docs. So that said, we need to create another directory over here and let's call this directory hooks. Inside the hooks directory, let's create a file called use auth with a capital A for auth dot JS. Inside of use auth, we're going to import use context from React. We've got that now. And now let's go ahead and import our auth context that we had created, and that comes from the context directory and the auth provider. Then we need to define our hook, which is use auth, and this is a custom hook. It's a very simple hook, really. It just saves us some time. We'll have a return and have our use context, and we'll pass in the auth context. And then we need to set our default export, so we will export default use auth and save. So usually when we would use auth or use this context in any component, as we'll see in the login component, we would have to import use context, import the auth context, and then set our context equal to this use context auth context. We can kind of eliminate those steps by just defining this custom hook so we can use auth and pull what we need from our auth context. And we can see how this works inside of the login component. So let's go to the login component. And here we had use context imported so we can remove that. We were also importing the auth context so we can remove that. So now let's just import use auth from our hooks directory. 
And once we have that imported, we find where we are actually using it in the component. So we were bringing in the set auth function, setting that equal to use context auth context. So here we'll just say use auth and save. And that's all there is to it. And we wanted to do this because we're going to use this global auth in other parts of the application as well. So this just makes it much easier. And now we're ready to create a component that will help us protect our routes. So let's create one more new component over here and we'll call this require auth with a capital R and capital A. And once we have that defined, we're going to import several things again from React Router. One is use location. Another is navigate with a capital N and another is outlet, which also has a capital O to start out. Once we've imported those three things from React Router, we also need to import our use auth hook. And with those imports, now we're ready to define the require auth component. Once I can spell again, so require, there we go, auth. And we're going to create two versions of this today. The first version will be a little simpler, more like it's a Boolean, basically whether the user is just logged in or not. Now, later on, we'll come back and change this and it will actually support role-based permissions for the users. Right now, we just wanna pull in the auth from use auth. And then we also need the location, so we'll set that equal to use location. And now let's create the return. And inside of the return for the component, since it's more like a Boolean, but we have an auth object, we're just going to check to see if there is a user. And that would indicate to us whether the user is logged in or not. Otherwise, there wouldn't be. In the future, again, we'll check roles, but now just the user. And let's make this a ternary. So if we have a user, we're going to return the outlet. Now this is another outlet like the one that was in the layout component. This one represents any child components of require auth. So this require auth component can protect all the child components that are nested inside of it. And so only if we have a user will it show these components. After that, let's have the false part of the ternary. And here we'll have the navigate that we imported and we'll say two and we'll just send anyone that is not logged in to the login page. But we also need to put a couple of attributes. So let's have one called state and set that equal to two curly braces here and now from, and we'll pass in that location. And after that, we're also going to set replace. And that's because the user isn't asking to be sent to the login. They wanted to go to another page, but we found out they weren't logged in, so we send them to the login. So what we're going to do is replace the login in their navigation history with the location that they came from. Now, there is something else we'll need to apply in the login component to make all of this work as it should as well, but this passes along that value, so we need that there as well too. Now let's go ahead and put a semicolon there, and we need to export default require auth and save. Okay, now let's go to the app component and apply this new require auth component. So then we need to import it as well. And I'll put it just above the routes and route import so it's with the other components. This will be require auth and it comes from the components directory and require auth. And now that we have require auth, we can protect these other routes with that component. So here we'll say route and then we'll have element equals and we'll pass in the require auth component and after that we'll put the greater than sign once again to close the component and we get that closing route that we can put after these other routes that we want to protect so now let's save and all of the routes within this route that has require auth should be protected by require auth. Now let's remember these routes are home, editor, admin, and lounge. So let's go back now as we resize and check the links here inside of the browser. So login and register are still publicly available, but we're not logged in. So let's just check these routes to see if we can access them. Nope, takes us straight to the login. If we try to go home, try the editor's page, straight to the login and the admin page. Once again, straight to the login. And notice how we were able to go back to where we were before, and that is because we provided 
that extra attribute in require auth, and I'll resize this so we can see it again, that gave the from location and replace. So let's temporarily remove these and save once again and see how the app responds differently. Now let's go to home and it took us to the login page and I'll click back and I'm still going back to the login. That doesn't work the way we need it to. So we really need this applied with those attributes. And then if we reload and we can go back, well, there we are. So now let's try it once again. It took us to the login and now if I click back, we go directly back to where we were. Now in the future, as I mentioned, we need to do something to the login as well, because then if we try to go to the admin page and we log in, it will take us to where we want to go instead of just being dropped off at the home page and having to navigate again. So it would kind of replace that history in the navigation and it would remember also where we were headed, which is important as well, not only where we came from. Okay, before we apply the role-based permissions and we're thinking about links and navigation and how the state from location and of course replacing that history in the navigation works, let's go ahead and apply the changes that we need to to the login component as well. So once we log in, it can take us to where we were headed and of course it will remember where we came from. At the top, let's import three things from React Router. We're going to import link with a capital L use navigate and also we're going to import use location and all of that once again comes from react-router-dom and we'll save that much now if we scroll down just a little bit underneath the set auth let's put an extra line or two and here let's define well, I'll tab in let's define navigate so equal to use navigate. Then let's define location and we'll set that equal to use location. And then we're going to define from. And let's set this equal to the location we just defined and then it has state. And then we'll see if it has the from property. And then we'll also see if it has a path name property. And if it does, that's what from will be. Other than that, We'll set an or and we'll just set it to the root path, which would take the user back to the home page otherwise. But what we really want to do is get where they came from. And then we want to scroll down to the handle submit function and change what is inside of there as far as where we're navigating our user to. So after the form is cleared out, then we want to navigate away. So instead of just setting the success to true, we'll put navigate here and we pass in that from value and then there's an object and we'll set the replace value to true and we can save this. I guess I could put a semicolon over here to match. So this essentially replaces that success page that was in the previous tutorial for the login. So given that we can go ahead and remove the success and set success state that was in the login and we can also remove that display from the JSX. So that removes our fragment and it removes our turn area there. And we'll need to do that at the bottom as well. And then we should be good to save. And we're back to where we expect it to be. So we have our form and upon success, now we're using React Router to navigate away. And we're actually navigating to that from value, which means where the user wanted to go before they were sent to the login page. So now I'll pull over from the other window just so you can see this, but I've got another instance of Visual Studio Code and I'm going to install, not install, I'm going to start the backend node server with npm run dev. This was created in my Node.js for beginners course. So you could go through that full tutorial and create this backend server. You can see it says connected to MongoDB, running on port 3500, and that's what I'm going to authenticate our users against. And it's also going to send us roles. But this will let us at least log in now, even though we're just using essentially this true user response here for now. And then we'll come back and add a little more to this. So let's check our app once again when we resize. Let's say we want to go to the home page. So now I'll enter in my name, and I'll enter in my password. 
and sign in and it took me to the home page so that is great let me sign out again let's say I wanted to go to the editors page because my user Dave is an editor so I enter in my password and it takes me straight to the editors page even though I was redirected to the sign in page first and so that's why we're modifying that history with react router okay I'm going to sign out again but now I'm going to expand the web page then you can right click and choose inspect or you can do control shift I and let's look at the console okay you can see what I'm getting here in the console when I log in I'm getting sent back not only an access token but also roles and today we're going to focus on the roles now everyone gets 2001 that means they're a user but then the editor role was the 1984 value so that's what we're confirming that we're getting back from that backend API are user roles that we want to authenticate against. So let's close the console again and resize the browser. We'll come back to Visual Studio Code and we can modify this require auth to now use those roles that are being stored inside of the auth state. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hide the file tree too, just so nothing runs off the screen here. And with this require auth component, we're going to receive a prop. And this prop is going to be allowed roles. So this will get passed in. And then once we receive that allowed roles, instead of just checking to see if we have a user, we're going to check the roles that are stored in our state. And then we're going to find a higher order function here and we'll pass in each role to see if we find the role and then we're going to check the allowed roles and then we're going to see if the allowed roles includes the role that is being passed so what we're doing here is essentially looking for a value comparing the values of the two arrays this roles is an array that is stored in our auth state and then the allowed roles is an array that is passed into this component and we're trying to match up a value. So we're checking to see if this allowed roles array includes the role that's being passed. And it will check each role in that array until it finds one. And so if it doesn't find one, then it would navigate away. Otherwise, the outlet would be there. And I don't want that semicolon that you saw me put there. It confused me for a second because it was on a separate line, so I did it out of habit. But this is a ternary statement. So this is what we're checking, and it ends up being true or false. And then we're either going to show the outlet if true, and if not, we'll navigate away. But this isn't exactly what I want to do, because we also want to show an unauthorized page. There is a chance now that we have a user that is logged in, but that just is not authorized to see the path or the page that they have requested, essentially. So if we want to show the outlet if true, that's still fine. But then after that, let's go ahead and put this on another line. We want a chained ternary, which I don't mind. Some people do, but this is not going to be a big chain ternary. So we either have true for the outlet. If not, we're going to check something else. So this is the beginning of the second ternary statement. And then if we do have a user, we just know they're not allowed to see what is nested here. So then we're going to have a different navigate. And otherwise, then we'll show the login. So this navigate is going to go to the unauthorized path. And then let's go ahead and put in the same state because once again, they didn't ask to go to the unauthorized path. It's just where they ended up. So we'll pass this along as well. So the back button works and that's important too. Okay, so now we've completed our require auth component that supports roles. So once again, the main logic here is we're comparing the values of two arrays. We've got a roles array inside of our global authentication that says all the roles that the current user has and then we've got the allowed roles array that is passed into this component and we're going to compare the two. So what we need to do yet is go back to the app component and pass in that allowed roles array for each path that we want to protect. So now back in the app component, right now we have one big block of protected routes, but we're going to change this. And what we need to do is pass allowed roles. And now inside the allowed roles, it's expecting an array. 
So for the home path, we can put in the user code, which is 2001. But now we're going to need to close this route off with a closing tag. So there we go and paste. Now we could put more than one path in here. All of the different paths that are allowable to this user or this role, we could put inside, nested inside of this require auth path. So now I'm going to copy the beginning here of the path and start another one for the editor. I'll save just so we get some proper formatting. And this is going to be different. We're only going to allow in the role 1984 for the editor, and we'll close that route as well. And now for the admin, it will be very similar route, but it will have a different code. This would be our 5150 code. I'll scroll so we can see that. And we should be closing that route afterwards as well. And now our lounge is an example of where two different codes are allowed. So now we can paste this and we'll have the allowed role of 1984 and 5150. So we can save those. Now in our system, every user gets the role 2001. So we don't have to specify the 1984 or 5150 up here. But if they did not, if they only had one or the other, then we could put all of the different roles up here in this array. So a couple of things to note, we can put more than one role in the array that's passed down. Another thing to note, even though I'm not demonstrating it, is we could put more than one path inside any one of these protected routes that are being protected by require auth. Now maybe you know these user codes for your company or for whoever you're working with and that's good enough for you to just pass in user codes and that's what is received from the server, from the uh, REST API that we've logged into. However, you could put in an object lookup and then use auto completion to help you out. So let's define a const up here just to show how that's done and we'll call this roles. Let's set this equal to an object and then you could put in user and here this would have a value of 2001, we'd have editor, this would have a value of 1984, and then you'd have admin, and this would have a value of 5150. So now we've created our roles object, and now inside of these arrays, instead of specifying the numbers, you could say roles.user, and we get auto completion there, which is nice. So here I'll say roles.editor, and then we'll have roles.admin. There we go. And now, of course, you can put in more than one. So we're going to have roles.editor. And then we'll also have roles.admin and save. So you can take advantage of auto completion with that and maybe it makes more sense to you to do that instead of having the codes. Remember if somebody digs enough your JavaScript is viewable by the public so maybe you don't want to put in the user, editor, and admin description either and you just want to make it a little less obvious by only using the codes. So that is totally up to you. So with this saved we're ready to check our app once again. Let's come back to our app and now we'll go ahead and click the admin page and I'm going to log in with my username Dave should not have access here two three there we go and I am unauthorized I do not have access to the requested page so I'll click go back and once I go back I'll click editors page and I am logged in so I can see the editors page no problem and I'm viewing the home page now which is only accessible if I log in and there's the link page so back to the home I can sign out and now let's log in with Kevin and Kevin does not have access to anything other than the home page so he is a user but he is not an editor and he is not an admin and so therefore he can't go to the lounge either but he could go to the link page, we'll just sign out. But now let's go ahead and sign in as Jane, who is trying to view the admin page that she should be able to. And we're at the admin page. She can also view the lounge because it's shared, but she cannot view the editor's page because she is not an editor. So everything's working as expected.
One quick thing I didn't show before we go here, we've resized that, we'll come back and we want to look at that unauthorized component and we'll hide the file tree again. The one thing to notice here is we are importing use navigate and we defined a quick function called go back. And here this has navigate minus one, which means it will just go back to where you came from. And that's what we're using for the go back button on the unauthorized page. So navigate minus one will just take you back one page in history. Overall, I hope this tutorial has not only helped you understand React Router version six a little bit better, but it has helped you understand how to apply role-based user permissions for your protected routes. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.